all, it's Alma with the Cat's Pajamas, and today I want to show you how you can edit your digital stamps using Silhouette Studio. Silhouette Studio Basic is a really robust, free application that you can download from the web. I'm going to put the link down in the description. Silhouette Studio Basic can do any number of things, even if you don't have a Silhouette machine. Today, I'm going to use it to edit digital stamps. And if you have a Silhouette machine, I'll show you how to print and cut with it. I have the Business Edition, but you can do what I'm doing today with the Basic Edition. And the Basic Edition is free. After you've opened the program, you need to set it up so that you can print on your printer. At the top right, make sure that the Design tab is selected. Under that, to the far right, you'll see a column of tools. Select the Page Setup icon. It's the one that looks like a page with the corner turned up. Since we're modifying the stamp and printing it, under the machine, you can select Portrait or None. For the cutting map, select None. For the media size, select Letter. Then to the bottom of that box, select Show Print Order. Now let's open our digital stamp. Go to the upper left to the icon that looks like an open folder. Navigate to the folder that contains the digital stamp you want. I want to use the Gnome from the Irish Coffee Gnome set. It comes with several different images and we're looking for the Gnome with the mug. Once you find it, select OK and it opens to a new document in Silhouette Studio. And he's pretty cute, but I think I want to remove the shamrock on the mug so I can use the image year round. I want to make the gnome a little bit bigger so it's easier for me to erase the shamrock. I'll do this by grabbing the white boxes at the corner around the gnome and dragging the box larger. Click the magnifying glass at the top with the plus sign to get closer to the image. Now let's erase. Go to the left toolbar and select the eraser. It's easy to use. Just click and drag through whatever you want to erase. Now if you make a mistake, go to the top of the screen to the arrow, curve to the left, and click. That's your undo. Now it's just a matter of erasing the shamrock. When you get close to a line you don't want to erase, take it slow. Lift your finger off the mouse to stop erasing. You'll notice when you do, you see an outline of where you erased. And that's okay. That's what we want. If you erase too much, no problem. Just click undo. You aren't really erasing the shamrock, but you're covering it up with the erase tool so that your printer can't see it and won't print it. Now if you need to get closer, use the magnifying glass. Now let's back up a bit. Click the magnifying glass with the minus to back up. We can see the result by clicking the button at the top left that looks like a printer. It looks pretty good, but really big for the card that I want to use them for. So let's fix this size. Click the cancel button to get back to the design worktop. On the left toolbar, select the rectangle and click and drag a rectangle onto the work area. I think I want to use them for a slimline card, so I'm going to go to the top and next to the diagonal line, I'll enter in the dimensions for a slimline. 3.5 inches by 8.5 inches, hitting my return button after I've entered the numbers. 
To the left of the diagonal line, I'll increase the line to one point. And to the arrow that's second from the left, I'll click, I'll click that and select what color I want the frame of the box to be. And it doesn't matter what color it is, just, just so I can see it. Now I can resize my gnome by grabbing the corner handles and decreasing the size of him. And I think that looks pretty good. Once I get him to the size that I want, I'll move him back to my workspace. Now I think I want a sentiment, so I'll choose a sentiment and I'll open it up. I'll go to the top bar to the edit menu and select copy. Then I'll select the file that I want under the top toolbar and click on it. Go to the top bar and select paste and adjust the size. Now I could stop there, but I don't like wasting paper. So let's create another rectangle and enter four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'll get rid of the slimline rectangle. I'll increase the size of the rectangle border to one point and color the border to any color I want, maybe black. Now I'll select the gnome and I'll do a copy and paste and resize him by grabbing the corners of the box. I'll place them in the rectangle and make adjustments. I think I'll do the same for a sentiment. And while we're at it, I think I'll do another version of the sentiment. So I'll copy and paste it onto the workspace. I want to add a little color to the sentiment. So while it's selected, I'll go to the color palette that's located on the right hand side. It looks like a paint palette. You can't miss it. I'll select the color I want for the sentiment, and I think that looks pretty cute. Now to change things up a bit, I think I want to make the sentiment two colors. I can do that too. Go to the top menu and select, select Object. Go down and select Release Compound Path. You'll know when it does that because you'll see the box holding the sentiment is now a whole bunch of boxes. And you'll notice that the open parts of the letters are filled in. And that's okay. I'm going to click on an area outside the letters and drag over the letters I want to change, doing a group select. And then I'll click the color I want them to be. I think black. And now let's get the open parts of the letters back. I'll go back to the top menu to edit and select make compound path. See how the insides of the letters disappear? Now I have to say that sometimes stamps can't be ungrouped like this, and we'll cover what to do if you can't ungroup them in a later video. Once I get it the way I want, I'll select the whole sentiment and go to the top menu and select group. Now just place everything within the print area. And click the printer at the top left. Select your printer and how you want to print it. Now what if you have a silhouette and want to use it to cut out your gnome? Here's how. 
Instead of printing your gnomes, go to the Page Setup palette and make sure you have selected your machine, in my case it's a portrait, and the correct cutting mat. Make sure you select the Show Print Border and Show Cut Border, and then select the, th the third icon above the Design Area Setup. That's the one that looks like a gray rectangle with three white corners. Then under Registration Marks, select On. You'll notice that your work area now looks like this. In the upper corners and the bottom left, there are black registration marks. Make sure that the items you want to print are within these areas and within the red cut area. Also make sure your areas are not in the grayed out areas. And then just print as usual. Now while the printer is printing, let's set up the cut areas for the gnomes. It's important not to move the gnomes from their positions. If you go to the Send button at the upper right, you'll notice that the areas we erased are showing up, even when we select Cut Edge. Now let's go back to the Design area and fix that. Select the gnome and go to the object and release Compound Path. You'll notice that the shamrock that we erased shows up that's because the area we erased is clear. So select the area we erased and fill it with white. And we'll do that with a smaller gnome as well. Now if we go back to the send area and select cut edge, you'll see that the cut now goes around the gnome and it doesn't cut where the shamrock was. Now let's save everything. Go to the top toolbar and save as Save to Hard Drive. Silhouette Studio will only let you save as a studio file, and that's good. That means you don't have to worry about overwriting your original digital stamp. I think I'll use a die on the sentiments, so I don't want to cut them, so I'll delete them. If we want a border around the gnome, we can do that too. Select the gnome and go to the toolbar on the right and select the star with an outline. That's the offset. For a border around the gnome, select offset and use the slider or enter a number to determine how big you want the border to be. It defaults to a curved corner, and you can see what you like better, a sharp corner or a curved one. I'll go with a curved one. Then click Apply. Go to the Send area and make sure the cut edge is selected, and now you can see how it will cut. Now it's just a matter of loading your printed page with a gnome on it into the machine and sending it to cut. The cutting machine will read the corner marks and use them to line up where you cut. And that's it. Now here are the digital stamps that I printed and cut out. I think they look pretty good. Now I get to color and make my card. It's easy to personalize your digital stamps. See you later. Have a wonderful day.